What to do when armed gangs have more firepower than the police? In Haiti, last Sunday's kidnapping for ransom of seven Catholic clerics throws the spotlight on a land where shanty towns are fiefdoms and politicians often in the pockets of criminals. We'll ask our panel about uh, brazen attacks like the one last month where police were routed and chased out of the capital's village de Dieu slum and a kidnapping epidemic that's gotten worse and worse since UN peacekeepers left in 2017. How to disarm Haiti when the president seems more focused on his own personal destiny, Juvenal Moïse, uh, who not only dismisses opposition can, uh, claims that his mandate should have expired in February, he's now planning a June constitutional referendum that could keep him at the helm way beyond 2022. As for the international community, how to parley what's left of the goodwill that followed the 2010 earthquake into support that doesn't simply line the pockets of middlemen. Today in the France 24 debate, we're asking just how much of a breakdown of rule and of law are we witnessing in Haiti? And joining us, uh, geographer Jean-Marie Théodat, lecturer at the uh, Panthéon Sorbonne University. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, from Washington, D.C., Mathias Pierre is the minister in charge of electoral matters and relations with uh, political parties. Welcome to the show. Uh, good morning. It's a pleasure uh, to be with you all. And from uh, the capital, Port-au-Prince, Valina Elise Charlier, member of the advocacy group uh, New Pape Dormi. How do you how do you translate New Pape Dormi? New Pape Dormi literally translates to "We are not sleeping." Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right. Thank you for joining us. The uh, France 24 debate, where you can join the conversation, and you have on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag F24debate. Uh, no word yet of the 10 kidnapped, including those seven clerics, but the country's president has weighed in. Jovenel Moïse pledging to do everything the law allows to secure uh, the release uh, of that group, and more broadly, uh, to stop the spike in kidnappings. Olivia Bizo has more. <laughs> At the end of March, thousands of Haitians took to the streets of Port-au-Prince to voice their discontent about political instability and a rise in gang violence. Kidnappings and demands for ransoms have recently surged across the Caribbean nation. So much so that last month, the government declared a month-long state of emergency in gang-controlled areas. The security situation has been deteriorating against the backdrop of a deep political crisis. President Jovenel Moyes insists that his mandate ends in February 2022, while opponents say it ended in February 2021. The disagreement stems from the fact that Moyes was elected in a vote that was invalidated due to frauds and then re-elected one year later. The anti-government protests have recently been gaining the support of police officers after many were killed in operations that targeted gang members. Some have also been imprisoned over accusations of participating in a coup d'etat. Yeah, the, 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 the plight of the police uh, in Haiti, something we'll talk about in a moment. But first, l let's talk about those 10 kidnapped. No word on their release. We know the French foreign ministry has set up a crisis cell. They were kidnapped on the way to the ordination uh, of a priest, um, uh, the head of their order, telling French newspaper Le Figaro that uh, they had a brief uh, phone call with the captors. The kidnappers asked the regional superior for $1 million or else we'll have a barbecue. And then he immediately uh, hung up. Uh, Jean-Marie Théodat, your, your reaction to that? I think, um, unfortunately, it's been, it's been a long time since we've been living this kind of hell atmosphere in Haiti because it's been since, uh, let's say, at least 2018 when the, there were so many uh, march in the, in the major cities, not only in port au prince but also in Cap Haitian, in Lekai, with people asking for some, um, for some accounts about uh, the way the, the money has been used since 2010 for the country to be rebuilt. And it's just after this 
uh, the, the spread of, uh, of uh, marchers that uh, we've been assisting to this kind of uh, uh, um, really collapse of the, of the real state and, and the multiplication of these cases of uh, kidnapping. You think there's a link? Yeah. How yeah, so? Yeah, there is a link in it. In it. Because, uh, I mean, it's almost the same people that were uh, um, destroying the marches, that were uh, uh, aggressing the, 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 the protesters that are now in the streets putting uh, meaning threat on the rest of the civil population. So, I mean, it's um, so obvious that uh, these gangs are protected from above that uh, we cannot uh, just, uh, I mean, describe what's going on, but try to find a link between the power and the troubles in town. Uh, Mathias Pierre, do you agree? I think uh, that's unfortunate um, that Professor Theo that, that I know very well uh, has made such accusation to the government. Um, and we distance as a government ourselves to any um, crimes organizations. I have to remind everybody who's listening, every time in this country we have problems where groups of politicians wants to overthrow power, you have increase in kidnapping, increase in gang. As a reminder, 2003-2004, when they wanted Aristide, Aristide of power, Jean-Bertrand Aristide, and we can remember Operation, Operation Baghdad, that was a group armed gangs, kidnappings, that goes, destroy the country for years, until the arrestation of one of the gang uh, and, and kidnappers, uh, Mr. Brett, and we got a break. And this we start again in the tentative and approach to overthrow President Jovenel Moïse. So, we what, so what you're saying, Mathias, if I, if I understand correctly, is you, you agree with Jean-Marie Théoda that there is a link between these criminal gangs and politicians, only you're saying it's between the opposition and the criminal gangs? I think there's a structural problem of gangs in country. Different elite groups are financing the gang people. Poor neighborhood people cannot have access to guns. Poor neighborhood people cannot import guns. Guns and equipment are imported by powerful people. But this is not, the, and, and again, go to the past. And we'll see for the past 20 years, whenever groups want to overturn president, you see increasing gangs and increasing kidnapping as a tool to prevent elections not to happen. Jean-Marie Théoda? Yeah, but I think um, it's uh, very smart from Mr. Mathias to make the comparison, but comparison is not a reason, as we say in French, because... Uh, we have so many tools when we are in a power to control communication, to know where a phone call comes from and wh who is calling. And there is uh, so many ways to find a way where the bullets and the arms, the weapons come from. And when a power, when a government cannot uh, 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 take the responsibility of the civil, civil, I mean, uh, peaceful in a country, that means you're are not uh, the right man at the right place. So let's move on and give maybe the power to someone else that can do the job. That's, this is the problem of responsibility. All right, the, the, the uh, kidnapping uh, of those clerics, uh, uh, by the way, it's not the first time this month. Uh, uh, on April 1st in the Capitol, there was an Adventist pastor. He was busy broadcasting his uh, Sunday sermon on uh, Facebook Live. Uh, and you can look at the images when gunmen uh, burst in. Hmm. Seen these images there about you, you missed it, but they, you, you have the gunman who uh, 
who, who then uh, come and take them away uh, uh, while, and this was all broadcast live on, that was all broadcast on Facebook Live. Of course, that didn't make uh, international headlines, Valina, Elise, Charlie. Uh, I mean, it, it was picked up, uh, but it, it didn't make as big a splash here as the kidnapping of two French nationals, who, by the way, including uh, a nun who uh, had already once been abducted in Guatemala. Yes, um, um, what we what we are living in Haiti, we need to understand. Despite um, Where's your sadly, this uh, I'm saying what's happening in Haiti, despite all the lies that the government wants to say, what's happening in Haiti is state-controlled kidnappings. It is very clear to us, the people living in Haiti, that the government has ties with the gang leaders. The prime minister himself mentioned many times that he's talking over the phone with the gang leaders. And gang leaders, many times on, on radio or on new TV or newspaper, they're mentioning that the reason why there is an increase in kidnappings is because the government didn't pay them. Of course, it's very easy to say that the gang members are lying, but I will remind everybody saying that the gang members are lying, that the G9, which is a coalition of gangs that we have today, was encouraged and, and, and founded by one of the prominent members of the disarmament um, commission. So it is very clear to us, at my job, um, we, we own with my husband a movie production company. Two, three of our employees were um, kidnapped, two Dominicans and one Haitian. That made international headlines, especially in the Dominican Republic. And I can tell you, without naming who, but I called a very high-level official in the government, and that person helped me with the kidnapping. But the, the fact I that, hang on, the, it's a serious charge that you're leveling, Val Val Valina. Uh, the fact that people in government have, have uh, uh, channels open to the criminals may be one thing, but you're saying they're actually in cahoots, they work together? I'm, I'm not affirming that the, um, they are working together. What I am saying is that there was a disarmament commission, and one member of that disarmament commission went to national TV, and on TV in Haiti, he mentioned him himself, and there is footage. He's the one who mentioned that he was behind the G9 coalition. He encouraged the G9 coalition. He said it himself. It's just facts. I'm just stating facts. Uh, at the heart of this, you mentioned it, uh, uh, this G9 coalition. Last year, the Washington Post followed a former police officer who portrays him as the portrays himself rather as the savior of the streets. His name is Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier. Um, he is a former police officer, um, and he took reporters on a tour of the La Saline slum. Uh, is there a relationship today, Mathias Pierre, uh, between uh, Cherizier and uh, the government? Is there, are, are, is it more than just communications lines that are open? Again, um, um, myself, um, as a former presidential candidate and a fierce opponent to Mr. and President Jovenel Moïse, who's in charge of the country, I think all these accusations are linked to one thing, to overthrow the president. What I'm asking everyone who's doing politics, instead of destroying the reputation of a country, accusing a president of our country of link to gang, while we know, we know for years, the gangs, the, the poor neighborhoods, people has been taken hostage by those gang people. We know the attempt that has been made by police to control the gangs. We know how many times that the police has been infiltrated by other police officers through politicians to try to create chaos. So, are you, are, so hold on. So just to be clear, you're suggesting that Cherizier doesn't is in cahoots with the opposition? Is that what you're saying? The head of the G9 myself, syndicate? Myself, personally, uh, I've never been in any meeting uh, where gangs' relation with government has been discussed. I heard 
and we made the decision in to create an emergency law to control those gang areas. The army has been deployed. The police has been deployed. Resources, we have lack of resources at the government level. The president has called the Secretary General of OAS. He had called the Secretary General of UN, asked for support to help fight the gangs, because what we need in government is to organize the referendum to create stability and avoid confusions for future leaders, and second, to organize elections to hand power to elected leaders. Je, je... That's what the goal is. That's what, as the government, that we're working on. Jean-Marie uh, Théodat, the comparison begs with Jamaica, right, where you have armed gangs in the shanty towns associated with one side or the other in politics. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a um, tradition, I mean, uh, in our region, in the Caribbean, that uh, uh, where, I mean, uh, democracy is not so deeply rooted. So most of the time, politicians think that uh, uh, the need to have uh, supports not only in the in the in the in the pallet uh, box, but also in the streets with people with weapons. But the thing is that uh, when Mr. Um, uh, Machas says that uh, he knows, he knows, he knows, and we know. But uh, if they know so much about the gangs, what have been done since there? What have been done so far? What have been done to to arrest or maybe to to put in jail those people that are in control of the other thing. That means that uh, the state in Haiti is so is so weak that they just uh, look at the things and don't have any 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 way to to stop it. Let's pick up on that point. How to stop the spike in kidnappings? When we come back, stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate. Welcome back, or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France 24 debate, and we're wondering how to tackle the spike in kidnappings in Haiti. On Sunday, it was 10 people kidnapped on the way to the ordination of a priest, seven clerics, including two French nationals. <laughs> we're talking about it with geographer Jean-Marie Théodat, lecturer at the Panthéon-Sorbonne University from Washington, D.C., Mathias Pierre, a minister in charge of electoral matters and relations with the political parties, and from the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince, Valina yes. Elise Charrier, member of the advocacy group New Pape Domi. Uh, just before the break, Jean-Marie was, was saying, OK, what do you do now to stop this uh, spike in kidnappings? And again, last month, when President Moïse tried to put on a show of force in the uh, Village de Dieu shanty town, well, it didn't go to plan exactly. Four police killed, eight wounded, and a few days later, that state of emergency that Mathias Pierre was uh, talking about decreed in parts of the capital. Uh, Valina Elise Charlier, uh, Short of a magic wand, what is the measure that needs to be implemented to stop these kidnappings? Well, first thing first, what needs to happen is that the government needs to stop being friends with the gang members. And despite what Matthias would say, this is a fact. The prime minister many times, when he says it over radio, when he says it on media, that he's talking to the gang members, what do you think he's giving the gang members? He's validating the gang members. When you, when we at Nupab Domi and other advocacy group are hosting um, very pacific, very uh, uh, non-violent movements to protest <coughs> and ask for the right to leave, what we are seeing is the police officers doing the repression on us, being very violent towards us. And the next day, you have those gangs heavily armed um, going to the capital, marching to the capital, and the police is strangely very absent. You were just referring to what happened to the police in Village de Dieu. We didn't see any, any movement from the PNH to go and recover those policemen bodies, but they went 
inside and we cover their, their tank. And um, when we are seeing the, the police um, reacting very violently towards peaceful protesters, but when gang members heavily armed are in the streets and nothing is happening, and uh, as, a, as a way of, of um, saying thank you, let, let's say that uh, uh, um, to the gang, you have a prime minister who's saying, yes, I regularly talk to gang members. So the gang members feel that they are validated. And again, I will write, um, say it again for everybody listening. The, it was a member of the Disarmament Commission who contributed to fund the G9 coalition. And the most recent massacre that happened in Bel Air was claimed by, Barbe by Barbecue, that same Barbecue who is the head of G9. So what needs to happen is that the government needs to understand that we, the people, are tired of them. We know that there, the president mandate ended on February 7th of this year. So the president, the government, is illegal. And now what they are trying to do is that they're trying to change our constitution so that they can protect themselves from prosecutions so that they do not go to prison for their financial crime when it starts from the Petro Caribbean and every financial crimes afterwards. And what many human rights groups are referring to as state massacres. There is no peace and there will always be gangs for as long as there is impunity and there is no justice. And justice needs to start from the very head of state. If the president himself is accused of um, corruption and he doesn't face justice, do you think gangs will stop? Gangs will not stop. We haven't seen any arrest of anybody importing guns in Haiti, anybody importing ammunition in Haiti. But when the illegal guns and illegal ammunition get into Haiti, or we hear from the national police that they have seized containers of guns, well, it's people who ordered those guns. Why aren't they arrested? Who in this country has enough money to order guns and to order ammunition? And why aren't they arrested? Follow the money. If they would follow the money, they would know who is ordering the gang, the, the, the guns, and who is distributing the guns to the gangs. Really? Why is the police so corrupted? Why is the government so corrupted? Ma why Ma is there so Ma much Let me bring in Matthias Pierre on this. Uh, Mat Ma Matthias, uh, uh, what can be done to get, to get rid of those guns? And, and should Jimmy Barbecue himself be arrested? I think um, we need to avoid uh, distorting the facts. Um, the president recently has put in place a special, a special um, uh, um, committee, and in charge is the director general of the police for tracking kidnappers, and particularly go after those who are behind the kidnappings. Um, and suddenly, some measures have been taken. There was a law, and now it starts increasing. Also, uh, the president has requested activation of all organizations that can follow the money to trace these people. These are ongoing things. One other element regarding the guns that are imported in countries, uh, there was multiple ports where containers with special effect coming from the diaspora, mostly where guns are coming in in country, measures have been taken to have only two ports, port of and Cape Asian, to have containers coming and block containers in or any other ports in country. This measure has been taken in place. We had been requesting from the U.S. government support for anyone who would export guns to Haiti so they could trace them and help them cap capture those people. Those are ongoing measures. I think on the government side, they, they, we declared uh, uh, the, the emergency law for the neighborhood of Villay du Dieu, um, um, uh, Grand Ravine, and other areas of Delmadeus, uh, Delmadeu, where you have those issues. And, and the army and the police has been mobilized to track those gangs people. We and yet we have those arrests, by, and we do we we yet we've had those arrests uh, that we saw on Sunday, and and by the way, those weren't the only kidnappings that happened on Sunday. Uh, uh, there was at least one exactly. other example. We, so, so what are you doing? That's exactly what I'm saying. Now, now we understand their lack of resources and, and support 
for the police. That's what we had requested, and the president had made call to international partners to provide necessary support to help us address those issues. All right, let's pick we up on that call. Let's pick up on that call to international partners and tr try for a second, Jean-Marie Théodat, to take sort of the long view on this. Um, is it Haiti's often, if not always, been awash with guns, ever since independence from France, you could even say. Uh, back in 1995, um, the then president, Jean-Bertrand Aristide, uh, who'd returned to power after being ousted in a coup, dissolves the, 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 the army. Um, it was supposed to be a, a, a turning point, uh, wasn't it, at that point? And we thought there'd be less of a militarized uh, politics from then on in. It, it was supposed to be the solution. That's what we call in French, jeter le bébé avec l'eau du bain. Throwing it's, out the baby with the bathwater. Exactly, exactly. So because the, the army was involved in so many coups before, since the uh, 19th century, that uh, President Aristide thought that uh, dissolving the army, it would be peace for the rest of the time. But uh, it was exactly the reverse that, uh, that happened. That means that uh, instead of the army that would be in charge of the uh, legal violence, uh, the, the, we had many uh, gangs, private gangs, private armies that finally took, I mean, the the prerogatives that were of the army. And now it's been, uh, I mean, democracy, democracy, democratize in a, in a term that means that uh, many people that uh, would be, uh, I mean, uh, in, in the position just decided to have their own gangs, their own army. This is a way of existing in the political scene in Haiti. And this is a shame. Instead of, ha of having a, 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 an army that would be the, the, the shield for the civil people, now we have gangs that are our enemies. So you heard Mathias Pierre suggest uh, one solution, which is appeal to the United States for help in stopping the import of guns. You you agree with him on that? I don't think Mr. Mathieu, Mathias Pierre is uh, really serious when he's talking about the diaspora of putting guns in Haiti. This is very, very, very very uh, hard to say, hard to and, to and to hear, because I don't think that in the United States you can have a, a, a ship uh, uh, going to Haiti from American ports with uh, guns, with weapons, without the American authorities uh, having notice of this. <coughs> and we should know that uh, the sea between Haiti and Florida is being expected at every second from the air in the sea by American navies not for the gun, not to come in Haiti, but for the migrants to go to the to Florida. So I don't really think that uh, the diaspora is in charge <coughs> of uh, putting arms and weapons in Haiti to put trouble in the country. This is not true, and it's not fair from him to say that about the diaspora. Mathias Pierre? Um, I need to clarify. Um, I said there's a lot of guns coming in containers in personal effect that has been proven. Second, the government has taken measures to limit containers in only two ports for personal effect. And also, the U.S. government has responded positively to help track any individuals who would export guns to Haiti. Yes, in many ports, a lot of guns were coming in in country, and this is one of the biggest measures that the government hasn't taken. And talking about the army, and that's exactly why you were right about the army, Mr. Teoda, that the government and President Jovenel Moïse, I take all the necessary measures to remobilize the army, and now we have three a, a thousand uh, army officers that are ready to help and support. Now we need resources for these people to be able to act. That's what we're doing as government. Identify the problem, bring solutions. Uh, Valina Elise Charlier, the remobilization of a national army for Haiti, uh, good news? Um, it is a very bad news. First thing first, it is illegal. It was done illegally, and Mr. Pierre knows that very well. They remobilized the army, and it was illegal. The, the, 
head of, uh, of the army was illegally uh, appointed. It was solely appointed by the president. It is not a good news. Haiti doesn't have a good story with army. Haiti doesn't have good memories with army. It is simply dangerous to have more people holding guns and being frustrated, being underpaid and undertrained. And this is what's happening in Haiti. And let me just remind everybody, because we're talking a lot about guns coming in Haiti to Haiti from the U.S. Let me just remind uh, um, Mr. Pierre and inform other people that may, do, may not know that there is an embargo on guns <coughs> coming from the states. So where are they coming from? And they, if they are truly coming from the states, why aren't anybody arrested? Let me remind everybody else also and inform the other people who do not know that Fednel Moshevi who was uh, uh, an appointed government official, directly appointed by the president of the country, who has been accused in many of the reports on the La Saline massacres in 2018, was arrested earlier this year, and he was released. And many um, human rights watch group mentioned that he was released by gang members. So why is he still free? Why is it that policemen are seen on video distributing food alongside barbecue while there, while barbecue is supposedly uh, on the warrant to be arrested? We are asking for results. We're not asking for measures to be taken and measures that are taking forever and no results are happening. We want to see the real people that are guilty being arrested and going behind bars. This is what we want to see. Um, calling back the army, and, and it was supposed to be an army of engineers that would be working in the environment, and all of a sudden, we're hearing that that army is also responsible of um, going after the gangs. Are they trained to go after the gangs? We do not know. And this is not what we want. We don't want talks. We are tired of talks. We want to see people going behind bars because they have turned our country into an unlivable place. We want to see results. And if the government, the president, and all of his agents working for him are holding on to power illegally, and on top of it, we are being killed and kidnapped by the days, then it is time for them to leave. And we've been saying it for long enough. Let, let's talk, let's talk about that because time is, is running short and uh, uh, we, we just we do need to talk about that, which is the fact that you have right now this, well, this t political tension that's going alongside the, 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 the tension surrounding this, the spike in crime. Uh, the uh, president whose uh, mandate, according to the opposition, his term has expired, a claim that Juvenel Moise rejected back on February the 7th. Let's listen. Il y a même bon dictateur, dit tout le monde. Mandat m'a fini 7 février 2022. Ça veut dire mandat, nous avons mandat 5 ans. Ça veut dire mon bon dictateur. Dictateur, c'est le monde qui prend le pouvoir. Ou qu'on l'a le pouvoir, mon va qu'on l'a quitté. OK, so there's the argument over whether or not, because they, they had to redo the election when his mandate ended. But what is for fact and what is certain is that Parliament's mandate is over, uh, Jean-Marie uh, Théouda. So at, at this point in time, <clears throat> what are the prospects going forward for Haiti? What, what goes first? How do you proceed now to get elections going? I think that uh, the real point is not uh, whether to know if the president is, uh, is uh, to continue or if his mandate is, is ended. He's talking about his formal mandate. We're talking about his moral mandate, about his ethic right to be there at that time after so many corruption, after so many assassination also of these people, of the civil in La Saline. And what we're talking about is not uh, whether we have, we're going to have election this year or next year, is when is he going to step off the power? Because uh, he's not capable of facing the real, um, the real um, problem of this country. So, Mathias Pierre, what's in this June referendum that's planned? I think, um, um, as in a democracy, elections is a must, and people need to agree with that. And certainly, because of many issues or many conflict in the actual constitution, the opposition has called for a new constitution. 
The country has called for a new constitution. So the president is engaged in a new in process of a new constitution where he will, he will not be benefited. On June the 27th, he called for a, refer a referendum. He called everybody to contribute to the new constitution, to avoid all the conflict, all the misunderstanding in the actual constitution, and vote for a new constitution, and have election on September the 19th. Why a political leader? Why you want power? Why you don't want to go to elections? Election, it's the way for each individual. So ju just to be clear for our, just to be clear for our international viewers, Mathias Pierre, uh, is this voting on on a take it or leave it constitution, or is it voting for a constituent assembly? It's voting for a new constitution. There's an independent commission that has been put in place. There is a, a, a tax. Uh, um, we call a project of a new constitution that is in discussion in the society. People need to contribute for the text to be finalized, and the text will be sent to the Electoral Council to vote uh, on, on, on June the 27th. And it would allow President Moise to it would allow President Moise to run for re-election. No, President Moise will not be elected. Will not be candidate. Is not is out of the process. That's exactly why he can do the process for the new constitution because he's out of the game. On February the 7th, 2022, President, his dream is to end power to a new elected leader. That's the goal. That's why I've been appointed by the president as an opponent to work to make elections a reality. Valine Elise Charlie, are you reassured? Um, really shortly, the government has no credibility to hold a constitutional referendum. They have no credibility. We do not trust them. We do not believe them. We know that they are liars. The opposition never asked the current corrupted president for a new constitution. Nobody in the civil society called for that. And let's just make it clear, it's not only the opposition who never asked for it. The society never asked for a new constitution. We do not have a constitution problem. We have a problem of corruption, of impunity, of people not being held accountable for what they did as head of state. The new constitution that they want to vote in Haiti is a constitution that would allow for a president to run away with any financial crime that they have committed, for example. So we would have never, as opponents, as citizens, <coughs> as Haitians, asked for that. The current government, we do not trust them. We do not trust that they can help honest legal, fair elections. We do not trust that the process that they are doing is transparent, is participating and honest. Whatever they are doing, it is their own thing. It is not us, the people, us Haitian, asking them to change our constitution. All right, we so d d d disagreement on that point. Uh, uh, we're, fortunately, we're, we're running short on time, but uh, there's much more to talk about, and we, it's an issue that we will revisit it. I want to thank you so much, Valina Elise Charlie, for being with us from uh, the Haitian capital, Port-au-Prince. I want to thank uh, Mathias Pierre for being with us from Washington, D.C., Jean-Marie Théoda. Thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate.